That's good. That's good. <laughs> All right. So this weekend we uh, went on our retreat, as y'all know, and uh, the whole theme of it was uh, purity. Can everybody hear me? Everybody hear me? All right. <laughs> uh, the whole thing about it was uh, purity, okay? And uh, what it means to be pure is uh, to... Uh, It's the quality or state of being pure. So uh, I'm going to read out of Colossians here, chapter 3, verse 5. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. So, we don't want nothing to do with these earthly things because, you know, this earth is pretty nasty, you know. Satan is the king of this earth, but the uh, good thing is God is greater than Satan, so, the devil. So. We are to consider ourselves uh, dead to the earthly things of this, earth, of this earth, which is sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. We don't want nothing to do with any of that because, you know, it's, it's no good. And, uh, another passage I got here is uh, in Psalms 119, uh, verse number 9. Uh, reads, uh, How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. So, uh, this world is full of contaminating images and attractions, and uh, we can look anywhere and find temptations that uh, to poison our minds and that don't please God. And this is just saying the way we can keep our hearts pure and stay away from that is by staying in the Word and read your Bible and do what it says. So, yeah. And uh, so we just talked this weekend it was mainly about uh, sexual immorality and uh, really we uh, there you're only the Bible says we're only to have sex once you're married and, uh, that's just the way it is and the earth says otherwise that you know just do it whenever you want and we ain't, we ain't supposed to do that so. uh, I'm going to finish up here with uh, Philippians 2 5 as a in your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Now, if Jesus, he he was in his relationships with everybody, he, he loved everybody, and so that's just kind of how we should be, but uh, we should just be careful and put Jesus first. So that's about all I have. I was supposed to do ten minutes, but I think I ran a little short. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was just an introduction for my man Clint down here. He's <laughs> All right, good morning. Hopefully I'll go a little bit longer than Ethan did. I'll, I'll try my best. So today I'm going to start out in 1 Corinthians 6, 13 through 20. I'm going to start about halfway through verse 13 at, but you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. They are made for the Lord, and the Lord cares about our bodies. And God will raise us from the dead by his power, just as he raised our Lord from the dead. Don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is a part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? For the scriptures say, the two are united into one. But the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. So what we learned this weekend is it's natural to be tempted by the devil through these things. It's natural when you're going through purity, you're going to feel these things. You're going to start looking at the opposite sex in different ways. You're going to be tempted to 
want and naturally feel like we need to have sex and watch pornography and lust after another boy or girl. But just because it's natural doesn't mean it's okay. It's actually one of the most dangerous temptations to man. So this, more, um, this weekend, Friday night, Easton gave us an analogy to sex. Sex is like fire. When fire is lit inside of a fireplace, everything around it is safe from being burned. It's contained. However, when the fire is not contained, outside the fireplace, the fire is dangerous to all that's around it. It has the power to burn the church down. All this new, um, new addition that we're doing, fire can, just like that, burn it down in within minutes. Sex is a, in the same respect. It's safe when it's contained, contained within marriage. But like fire, when practiced outside of marriage, uncontained, sex can destroy lives in literally minutes. So first I want to say our bodies were made for the Lord, and therefore the Lord cares about them. Our bodies were made to glorify God. We were made to be on this earth to glorify God, not to glorify the world, not to glorify Satan, but to glorify and work towards God. And one verse that tells us this is Colossians 3.17. I can get there. Colossians 3.17 says, And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. So we are to literally give thanks to him in everything we do. No, no matter when we're eating, sleeping, walking to school, whatever we're doing, we should be giving thanks to God. For without him, we wouldn't be doing it. We wouldn't be, I wouldn't be standing here without, right now without him. So why would we want to take our bodies and sexually defile them when they're a part of Christ, when we should be glorifying them for Christ. They're literally a part of Christ's body. In verse 16, and don't you realize, no, 15, don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? We are literally, my body is a part of Christ's arm. We'll say, I'm a part of Christ's arms, I'm a part of Christ's foot or leg. Your bodies are a part of his body somehow, for the church is his body. So why would we want to join Christ's perfect body to a prostitute? His perfect body to someone who sells their body off to give pleasure, to not glorify God, but to glorify the world. So whatever we do with our bodies, as Christ's bodies, they have eternal significance. Whatever we do will impact what happens next, and it happens next, and it happens next. So down the road, what I did will eventually affect what my kids do, what um, Ethan's kids do affect, is affected by what he does. So our bodies have eternal significance. So why, why would we want to mess eternity up now by sexually defiling? So finally, in this first point, the Lord cares about our bodies. He wants to see them safe and glorifying him, and he grieves over the sin that defies, that defiles them. The Lord made each and every body um, specially. We are creatures that the only – God spoke every other creature into existence except for man. He took man, he knelt down to the world, took mud, and formed us. He formed us. While a zebra over there, he just said, all right, there's a zebra. He actually took the time to craft our faces, to craft our bodies and arms. So why would we want to take his work and then just say, no, I'm done with it? Who cares? It's just, it's just a body. It's not, it's not going to matter here in 10 years. 10 years, I could be dead. Why does it matter now? It matters because God made you. So he cares about his works. Like if I painted something, I'm going to care about what happens to it. I'm not just going to throw it in the trash after I'm done with it. I care about it. So we should be keeping our bodies just like we keep paintings hung up in the house. We should keep our bodies in mint condition, as, as perfect as we can keep them. And he, he grieves over whatever we do to them. As Okay. So... My next point for 1 Corinthians is sex is a joining act. And why would we want to join Christ's perfect body to the world? So sex is a joining act emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually. And um, in verse 16, my Bible gives me a reference back to Genesis 2.24. And it says,
This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. So once you have sex with somebody, you are bonded together. There's actually science behind it that proves it. When you have sex, oxytocin floods the brain, just like during childbirth childbirth and breastfeeding, which are all crucially bonding moments. So when you're breastfeeding, if your baby and mom are not bonded, the baby's not going to eat. Therefore, it's going to get sick, and if in worst cases, it's going to die. We want that bond because without that bond, everything goes to crap. <laughs> so science is therefore proving that when you have sex with someone, you're bonded to them. You're glued together like two pieces of paper. When you practice sexual immorality, you're ripped apart most of the time because you're not ready for marriage. You're, you, re- you break up, and when you're broken up, you're ripped apart. Your whole world is falling in on you. Why would we want to take God's perfect bodies that he made, join them to somebody else, and then just rip them apart? Why would we want to do this? So when you're a believer and you're partaking in this sexual immorality, you have to realize Jesus is there with you. It says in the Bible that Jesus, when two or more believers are together, God is there. He is with you wherever you go. You can't hide from him. So why, when you're partaking in sexual immorality, Jesus is there, and therefore we're joining Jesus, ourselves, and the other person that you're um, having sex with together. You're bonded. And you're going to rip apart you from Jesus, you from the other person, the other person from Jesus, you're just ripped apart that bond that sometimes can take years to rebuild. Sometimes it will never be rebuilt. So therefore, Jesus grieves over this. He grieves over taking that bond and throwing it away. For that person could not, you just took their chance of knowing them sometimes. Sometimes you took their chance and threw it in the garbage and said, I don't care where you go. I don't care if you go to heaven. I don't care if you go to hell. You're done. I'm done with you. You just said, I'm done. So instead, we should want to be joined together with Christ. We should want to be together, glued together with Christ, live, walking throughout the world, bonded together with Christ, glorifying him in everything we do. Everything. So next, I want to read from Hebrews 13, 4. And it says, Give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. So, basically it's saying purity is more than sexual immorality. Purity is not, the idea of, it's not only the idea of sexual immorality before marriage, but it's also saving yourself in marriage for your spouse and no other. Why? You're married to this person. You love these people. You've made a bond together. So why would you want to throw your bond to them? So you're going to commit adultery and go make another bond with somebody else? When you're in this marriage, you're together through life, for life. That's what marriage means. You're bonded together for life. So why commit adultery and say, okay, there's one, now I want another. I want another bond with this person. When you're not going to be with them forever, you're going to be with your wife, you're going to be with your husband for as long until death do us part. But the thing is... Society today doesn't see it like that. Society says, is telling us that we can skip out whenever we want. Current divorce rates in America are 40 to 50%. That's almost half of every couple married are divorced. That's almost half of every child from that marriage losing a mom or dad, um, going through the trauma. I've seen it at school. I see what it can do. It's, it's heartbreaking. So next... I want to say faithful marriage requires both the body and the mind. You must remain faithful in the body by not committing adultery and in the mind to your spouse by praying for them. In marriage, you should be praying for each other, praying that you're glorifying God every day together, praying that whatever you do with your kids is glorifying God. You're raising them up in a spiritual household, praying that whatever you do, you know you're glorifying God. You know that, hey, he's smiling down on me because I'm doing this. So... Basically, I'm going to wrap all this up with purity. Yes, it's not doing sexual sin. It's not watching pornography. It's not lusting after a boy or a girl. But all in all, it's, not, it's 
glorifying God through whatever you do. It's glorifying God as you walk through life. Because are you going to want God to know? Think about God being your mom or dad. Do you want them to know what you're thinking inside your head? Most of the time, no. <laughs> I mean, most of the time, we don't tell our parents everything. We don't want them to know everything that's going on. But God already does. So why would we do something that he, we don't want them, him to know about when he already knows about it? So just, I want to get, a point across, um, get the point across that we should be living to glorify God. That's what purity is, glorifying God. So I just want to come, I'm coming to a conclusion. I just want to end in prayer before we open up invitation. So if you bow your heads and pray with me. Lord, I thank you for bringing us out here today just to, for the purity retreat this weekend to learn what purity actually is, to learn that we should be glorifying you throughout our daily lives, Lord, that we should be loving you and knowing you throughout everything we do and thanking you for this opportunity to be here. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to speak and showing me that not everything we do glorifies you and that, Lord, we should want it to. Lord, I ask that you'll help everybody here to glorify you and each and every day and know that you're smiling down on us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Now I don't have to scream. Um, but we really want the students to understand the, the weight of this commitment. Um, just the importance of abstaining from sex until marriage. Um, and so that's why we do this. And the reason why we're doing it here this morning, there's a reason why we didn't just hand out um, free toes and these purity rings and just said, hey, here's a ring for you just kind of flippantly no, we wanted to take a special service time this morning so that the church, uh, their brothers, their spiritual uh, mentors here at Raymond Baptist Church, I know there's a lot of distractions, guys, but I want you to pay attention for just a moment. The reason why we do this this morning is so that you can hold these students accountable, so that you would invest in their lives because we can sit back and we can see what's on the television about how worldly things are, how worldly women are dressing, or just how, just how nasty the world has become. And we can sit back as a church and just curse the darkness and say, man, can you believe the world's like this? Or we could do something about it. Um, and that's what we're doing here this morning. And instead of just saying, well, the world's so nasty. No, we're instead training up students on how to be pure. And uh, teaching them what God's Word says. And I just want to thank all the chaperones from this weekend that went, who took time off. Those of you that um, have donated so that these students could have purity rings. And again, this is just a symbol, just a reminder. And I, I think of it like this. Uh, they're at middle school or high school, and a guy looks and he sees a ring on her finger, and he's saying, well, what's this ring? And then that girl can say, Hey, I've made a purity commitment, and if you touch me, my pastor's going to elbow drop you. Um, I mean, it, uh, we say it silly, but again, this is an opportunity for, again, for them to share, to be salt and light in our school systems, wherever they're at. And so um, I'm hoping they've made their way up here. Let me see. And also, we had the parents go with them. Why don't we just do that as a church? Um, many times the reason why youth ministry exists is because parents are lacking. Uh, parents are failing. But we wanted the parents to come up here this morning as spiritual leaders of their home. Maybe a dad or, or who, whomever is a spiritual leader of their household would be able to place that ring maybe on their daughter's finger or that a son, a father could, that he's invested in his whole life, could again be that spiritual leader and give them that purity ring. Um, are you guys excited? I'm excited about this. So we'll ho hopefully it will go smooth. Are they out there? And also, they're in alphabetical order. And so, uh, for those photo people that like to take pictures, you kind of know their last name when they're coming out. So. Miss Margaret, will you go get those guys, please? <laughs> I'm going to start yodeling if nobody comes out. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
that we need to do all this. All right, Miss Allie Barr and your family, if you guys would make your way up here. All right, this here is a vow of purity, uh, and I'm just going to ask you to, to either you can read it now, you can read it with your with whomever, but this is just a certificate from our church to give you, just as a reminder, and uh, we want to definitely get y'all's picture right here, uh, taking this vow of purity, just as a, I don't know, pictures are good sometimes. (laughs) Awesome. And we just want you guys to know that as a church family, we love you guys, and we're going to pray for y'all as you seek purity. Praise the Lord. You guys can be seated. (laughs) Next we have Mr. Brody Barr. Now, Brody, I'm going to ask your mom to put that ring on your finger. That way, was it too small? Was the ring too small? (laughs) Okay, awesome. Well, this is a vow of purity. I'd invite you and your family to sit down sometime, and I'm, I'm sure you've probably read over this already, but this is just a, just a reminder of the vow of purity that you have made, and we're going to be praying for your family as you seek purity. And the rest of the clan, Miss Emma Barr. Okay, yeah, that, that's good. And what? how sweet this is to see a dad placing a purity ring on his daughter's hand. And this is a uh, certificate of your vow of purity, and we're going to be praying for you as you continue to shepherd your daughter until marriage. And so um, if you want to do elbow drops on any guys, we understand. Um, okay. Go and get your picture right there. there. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Mr. Zachary. I'm just quickly becoming uh, acquainted with Zachary. Uh, he's in my Sunday school class, and he is a sponge. He is learning so quickly, and uh, he's funny. I mean, this is a funny guy, and I can't wait to continue to get to know him. Church family, we need to continue to hold Zachary accountable. Um, I'll just, I'll leave it at that, but uh, do you already have your ring? She's going to give you the ring, and thank you, Miss Sherry. This is your vow of purity. Miss Paulette, this is Miss Paulette, and uh, we want to give you this certificate, this vow of purity. Miss Sue Ellen, will you give her the ring? And we just want to, again, offer any guy that comes your way that is uh, tempting you, all you have to do, again, is call us, and we will elbow drop. You know, I say this jokingly, but in all seriousness, we really are serious about purity. And we just want all these young ladies to know that uh, it's serious, that abstaining until marriage is entirely important because you can carry with you scars from your past in marriage. And also men, as they look at maybe girls in the youth group, maybe girls they go to school with, more than likely these girls they're looking at is some other person's wife. And so we want to continue to endorse purity here at Raymond Baptist Church. Next is Jacob Dodson. I feel like an announcer right now. (laughs) Come on down, Jacob. (laughs) All right. I'm going to get you, uh, get your ring put on there. And we just want you to know also that we're praying for you as a church family. This is just a piece of paper. The true commitment is in your heart. So they're going to get your picture, and we're praying for you guys. All right. (laughs) 
Next is our minute man here. No, we're so thankful for Ethan. If those of you that have watched Ethan grow up, I mean, he is, Ethan is Ethan, and I appreciate that about Ethan. I, in all seriousness, he's the most genuine person that I know, and I appreciate that. In a world of just fakeness, Ethan's not fake, and I appreciate you being faithful this morning, bringing us God's Word. Again, this is just a piece of paper to remind you of the, the vow you've made. Your dad's going to uh, give you a ring. Don't say I do, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're going to get your picture right there, guys. Good job. Clear. Brace got double duty this morning. This is Sam. And again, Sam is so genuine. I just appreciate his heart, his kindness. My boys love him to death. Uh, here's a piece of paper, your vow of purity. We're praying for you. And you've got a lot of mentors to look up with. you got an older brother. And we pray that you guys will hold each other accountable. And uh, he's going to give you your ring there. Very good. And they're going to get your picture right there. You can smile. <laughs> Sydney? Sydney, sorry, I can't read cursive very well. Miss Sydney. There you go. This is a vow of purity, and Miss Sue Ellen, can you please? There we go. And we also want you to know that we love you guys. We're praying for y'all, and uh, we're just really want to encourage you to seek purity until marriage because God has a plan. And so don't ever, um, don't ever compromise. Stand on God's word. They're going to get your picture right there. Shauna. Miss Shauna. Come on down. Here we have your vow of purity. Did you have a fun weekend? Yes. She said yes. And again, this is just a reminder of the purity uh, vow that you've made uh, before the Lord, before your mom here. And she has your ring right there for you. And can you tell us what that ring says, by the way? I haven't mentioned that. I will wait. The ring says, I will wait, just in case you guys were wondering. They're going to get your picture right here, Miss Sean. <laughs> Praying for you guys. <laughs> Mr. Caden, come on up. Now this guy. I love him. He's a good guy. Uh, this is Caden, and we want to give you this vow of purity, and we want you to hold him accountable for this vow of purity. <laughs> he says he's going to, so uh, we have a ring for you here. And we love you guys. We're so thankful you're here. Uh, we want to get your picture right here together. We're praying for you, Caden. Very nice. He signed his formal name, William. I like that. Well, most of us know him as Case. And just a few, um, just a few months ago, I had the pleasure of baptizing Case. He come forward. Um, he was saved. He wanted to make it public. Um, what the Lord had done in his life. And since then, we've seen the Lord work in so many ways. And just this morning, we were talking about what we were thankful for and uh, in Sunday school. And he talked about his church family, about one of his best friends that, that shared with him the gospel. And he was able to come here to church. And so, again, this is just another staple of uh, just discipleship of how the Lord is working and we love you, Case. I'm going to give you this vow of purity. And he's going to put a ring on your finger. I don't say that very often. <laughs> we 
We love you, buddy, and we can't wait to continue to see you grow. Then we're going to get your picture. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Would you all like to come up? Would that be okay? I don't want to take away the spotlight. If you want to go by yourself, you can. <laughs> can I see the Clint's also? Well, obviously, we've seen the Lord use Clint this morning. And uh, by, if you appreciated what these young men have done this morning, can you give, let that be known with the hearty amen? <laughs> so here we have, um, Clint, this is your vow of purity. Allie, this is yours. I'm quickly getting to know Allie. She's also in my Sunday school class, and she is smart as a whip. And so watch out. Um, so let's, again, pray for this family. Uh, pray for Clint as he is leading his home, as we should all dads. Um, pray that the Lord would lead into each one of these students' lives a godly man and a godly woman when it's time, when it's the Lord's time. And, and so we appreciate you all's vow of purity. If you want to put those rings on the... <clears throat> this uh, makes my heart very happy, actually, for both of you that you're making this commitment, and I pray that you take it seriously, and your current boyfriend needs to know that you have this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's get their picture. <laughs> Allie, your dad loves you. <laughs> Jim Wales. Yeah, we're going now we have, um, let's, let's bring the whole Shimwell clan out. <laughs> Zach. Zach, this is yours, and Corey, this is also yours. And uh, we just love your family. We love all the families, of course. But I just want to point that out, that we love you guys. We're thankful how the Lord's working in your life, Zach, as you're continuing to, Lord willing, prepare for ministry, worship ministry, whatever the Lord has for you. Just know that we see the Lord working in you, and I know you guys are proud. And uh, so if you don't mind to place that ring on their finger. And we need to be praying for this dad also as he is leading his home. Uh, let's, let's get a picture of him. You guys. All right, the Wii 3. <laughs> yeah, I know it looks good. Caden. And Zach. Well, here we go, guys. You need an extra hand, don't you? <laughs> no, we love these guys. Uh, they're also making the vow of purity, and we want to continue to encourage them and and it's helpful because you guys are all the same age. You can nudge each other along, hold each other accountable. And uh, <laughs> in all seriousness, it is helpful when a sibling holds each other accountable, when they know where they're going, uh, when they'll be home at night, who they're hanging out with. Accountab accountability is so important. So if you guys don't care to put those rings on their finger. And again, this is just a symbol. A ring is just a symbol. If I take this ring off, I'm still married to Miss Emily. Um, but this is a, a commitment they've made before the Lord. So let's, let's give them a round of applause and get their picture. <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> Last and certainly not least, the Williams. Uh, 
I seriously think since I've been here in seven months, they've grown like at least six inches apiece. Uh, <laughs> obviously, right? And also, I need to point out that today's somebody's birthday, I believe. Um, this guy on the end, it's his birthday. Uh, Carter, I want to give you yours first. And Ty. Maybe at the end. Um, right now, I just want you guys just a note. I mean, Carter is on fire for the Lord. I see him in our Sunday school class. He's inviting friends. He understands truly what the Great Commission is, and that's only because parents investing in their children. And so we're thankful for that. We're thankful for the example. We love you guys, Ty. I mean, he, he's growing also. You guys heard him read the passage of scriptures for him praying. The Lord's working in both their hearts as b- both believers. And so if you guys don't care to uh, give them their rings, That's up to you guys. You can put it on your toe if you want, I guess. And we're very thankful that you guys have also made this covenant. I believe you're the last ones. And so you guys get to sing for us. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, let's take this moment right now to uh, pray for all of our students and their families. And then um, let me make some announcements before we go. Because if not, I'm going to forget to do it. Uh one of them is uh, Thursday. Uh, do you want to make that announcement, Ms. Barb?